So, you might be wondering, what shirt is that, Iman? Iman, you never usually wear white, and you would be correct. Except for when it's the Gadgy Season 2 line. Now, I'll speak a little bit more on that later. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do today is I'm gonna go ahead and do a vlog and it's gonna be quite um, deal heavy. Guys, to be honest, like, I hate vlogging. Like, it's, it's, no, it's no secret that I hate vlogging. My day-to-day -day is very, very boring. It's very regimented. I wake up at the same time, I meditate, I read, I get to work, I have the same work blocks, I have my team call, then I work some more, then I have another team call, it, it's, then I might have some sales call. It's, it's very, very boring. Even yesterday, I closed 6,500 pounds, which I believe is, I believe it's actually just around $8,000. So close around like $8,000 a month in like bottom, in like profit, you know, there's no extra additional costs. I already have my team. So yeah, I closed an extra $8,000 a month in clients and didn't record it. And to be honest, I never record any of my deals just because like, you know, I don't know, I, I think I have this fallacy that like, unless it's like a $20,000, a $30,000 deal, you guys don't want to see it. Like yesterday was um, 2,500 pounds a month. So I believe that's $3,100 a month and 4,000 pounds a month, which is around $4,900 a month. I was like, eh, they wouldn't want to see such small deals from my agency. Then I just kind of have to slap myself and remember that those aren't small deals. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a deal analysis number one, and then we're gonna cut and I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about the Gadget season two because I've got some other prototypes waiting upstairs and just tell you about generally where the line is going over the next 12 months. Very, very exciting stuff for that. Then we're gonna hop into deal two, and I'll break down that deal. And then I have two more sales calls today. One, I know 100% I'm not gonna close on the spot. So nonetheless, I'll just show you how that goes. That's actually a referral from one of our clients, but they just don't really fit our mold. Uh, it's like, a, first of all, it's a B2B, all-in-one solution. We don't do B2B. And then directly after that, I've got another sales call, which Danny and I feel very uh, confident about. And um, I should also probably talk to you guys a little bit about how I've restructured the sales process this year, because now Danny does a 15-minute demo call. He qualifies them. Currently, as it stands, we're doing two to three demo calls a day. I can't do two to three sales calls a day, especially when only probably 50% of them are, are actually qualified. One thing I will say, pretty much all the last few demo calls have been qualified. But anyways, I will tell you guys about the structure of it. And then we might end off the vlog with maybe some old drone footage because Pete managed to lose his drone charger. <laughs> you were gonna say that? Yeah, maybe we'll end off with some cinematic drone. Maybe I'll go up on the roof and while it's sunset and like tell you guys a story. So I, I don't know, I don't really have a plan apart from that. I, I, let's get into it. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, deal number one was 2,500 pounds a month retainer, no percentage of ROAS, which might uh, shock some of you guys. So I think most of you guys know that our minimum retainer at the agency is 4,000 pounds a month set. And that goes up to like 12,000 pounds a month, but we build a lot more in the past in billables between set and a percentage of ROAS. So in this first deal we did, um, you know, we've done 2,500 pounds a month before, but we also do a percentage of ROAS in that instance. What I've been testing out with recently, and I've been having a lot of fun in the past like three, four weeks with my agency, I finally have some more time to focus on my agency and mark my words, I'm going to get to $150,000 a month profit with my agency. Maybe not this year, but next year, 100%. I said that I would hit 100K a month profit with my agency last year. I did it. And this year, I'm going to hit 150K a month profit. But, and it's back to my point, I'm having a lot of fun with my agency the past two, three weeks because the past like six, seven months, I've had to focus on the charity stuff, the clothing stuff, education stuff. There's been hiring. There's been so much on my plate. So for the next six, seven months, I can focus on growth with the agency. What happens with the agency, I'll be maintaining, I'll hit new heights and then I'll slump below Below that because you know once again I kind of have to go into maintenance mode with my agency because I've got these other companies and then it kind of maintains and maintains and maintains until I make some changes in the agency so so yeah you know there's a couple things that have changed obviously the two call close some of our pricing structure our minimum set retainer our minimum monthly agreement as many of you guys know we've hired a new performance marketer actually we've had 150 applications we're now down to seven and from seven they've actually just been set a task we've actually just kind of sent them on a bit of like a, a treasure hunt um and then from seven i'm gonna do three final interviews me daddy and the performance marketer and then i'll be hiring one so yeah we're gonna pick one and then the 10 to 12 others because we had some ridiculously strong candidate. multiple multiple people have spent over 20 million dollars i'd say probably 10 percent of them have spent over five million dollars like a really good bunch. So the other 10 to 12 that we've vetted, we've had multiple interviews with, but we just decided not to take on. We're actually giving them to the copy paste agency students. So rather than paying some recruitment agency 
anywhere from like four to eight thousand dollars we've just gone ahead and done the job for them but anyways back to my point with this deal it was 2500 pounds a month no percentage of ROAS but a six month minimum. So obviously usually we do a three month minimum. Now we're kind of experimenting, testing out longer length minimums because for me, like churn is not a fun thing at any agency or any service-based business. So the longer you can make that client lifetime value, the better it is for you as a business. So as I said, I weighed up the pros and cons and yeah, it kind of kills me that like, you know, I'm, this isn't like a 8,000 pound a month deal, a 6,000 pound a month deal, a 7,500 pound a month plus return on ad spend deal. Like, Yes, like, you know, it kills me, but you can't always get those whales. Like, you know, it's just, it's a part of the game. Sometimes these smaller clients, longer term, uh, are a good thing for the agency. In fact, we even had a client who was 3,000 pounds a month plus, yeah, 15% return on ad spend. Um, and he had done his three month minimum. He was with us for another month. And we decided, like for us, it would actually just be nicer to lock him into another six months. So I told him, I was like, look, we're gonna waive our percentage of ROAS as long as you wanna continue to work with us long term. And we ended up signing a six month extension. So for example, with that deal, it's a minimum of 10 months. So obviously the three months, we had a one month intermission. And then I told him that I want to drop the percentage of ROAS in another six month contract. So you know, that client is saying for at least 10 months. And I would imagine far, far longer than that as well. If I get my retention to 12 months on average, that includes the clients that stay for 18 months and the clients that, you know, leave after the three month minimum, because it happens sometimes. I'll be a very, very happy agency owner because to me, uh, that's a very, very strong KPI. Anyways, back to this deal. Danny spoke to him the day prior on the 15 minute demo call. He qualified him. He told me a little bit about it to be very honest, gut instinct. I was like, probably not going to bring him on. So then I went into the main discovery call with him and you know, we actually had our uh, team call right before this call. And, and Danny was like, look, let's just charge him 2,500 pounds a month. I can handle it. I'm not concerned about this account at all. Like I can, this, I got this, this is good. And I told Danny, I was like, look, Danny, you know that I, we have a lot of trust between each other. We need to when, you know, Danny's now come more into chief marketing officer role with the agency where he's below me. Now we're bringing on the new performance marketer. And then obviously he's managing the appointment setters as well, the ads for the agent, you know, like, you know, Danny's maturing in a lot of ways and he's coming into a more managerial role. So there has to be a lot of trust there because I said, the last thing on earth that I want is a, is a retainer that's far below our minimum and is going to be a pain in that. So, you know, this is kind of where if you have a team, you know, whether you have someone who's coming into a more managerial role or not, like even if you just have a, even if you don't have like someone in a more managerial role, even if it's just someone who's the performance marketer for your agency, there has to be a lot of trust there because I said, it's not enough just to sell a client. Like for me, there's so many clients that I could have signed up if I just wanted the quick retainer, I wanted the three month minimum, but I know that they're not gonna stay longer than that. And as I said, for me, my number one goal is to get to a point where we have a, I mean, 12 to even 18 month uh, average retention would be incredible. So anyways, back to my point, uh, I'm gonna put this one lonely AirPod in, I'm gonna look through this and I'm just gonna see if there's anything interesting that I'd like to relay to you guys in terms of uh, why I said what I said. Uh, do you know a little bit about uh, our pricing structure and sort of rates we charge? Uh, I have some, some rains, but yeah, yeah, you can, you can, uh, give me a uh, better detail. Uh, What's your, out of curiosity, uh, can you take a guess? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's like way over, like at least 4k per month or. Well, actually you are, you're a spot. Uh, if we're talking 2019, you're spot on. Uh, our minimum retainer was, it was 4,000 pounds a month. Okay. Um, we have been doing a lot of things operationally at oh, 4,000 pounds a month. Also, if you want a case study funnel build or a webinar funnel build, I'll be 20 or 25,000 upfront. Um, okay. in 2019, that made it very, very hard, uh, to, you know, even though, even though we had clients that, uh, even though we had the best results in the industry, like not many people can afford that upfront, even if it's going to make you yes. seven figures. So, you know, we've been doing a lot of work um, this year operation and make sure that, you know, we can be a little bit more affordable with clients, but clients that we see ourselves working with long term. Um, so that's why we want to view our clients more as partners. Um, so Danny and I had a little talk about it and we'd be happy to take this off of your hands so you can focus on the actual CEO shit and focus on growing the business. Take this off of your hands, get you the same sort of 2019 results you were getting on this while we're while we're taking what you already have, you don't have to spend any more time on it and we're improving it. Right. We're also building this new thing, right? We're building this new thing. So that way, hopefully in three months we can just, <laughs> we can, we can get rid of this thing entirely. Cause so what you saw right there was me asking the client, um, do you have any idea as to how much we charge? The reason I said this was because, and once again, this isn't part of my normal sales process and sales script. I just wanted the client to say it first. 
I just got the impression during the call that the client had a good understanding of how much we were charging and I wanted them to say it. I wanted there to be that benchmark of 4,000 pounds a month. And, and once again, I, I told him to take a guess and he guessed spot on perfectly. And I wanted to set that benchmark because then once I told him, okay, look, we're gonna charge you 2,500 pounds a month with a six month minimum, it seems like a total steal. And as I said, I wanted it to come out of the client's mouth directly and I wanted them to take a guess and said really just to set that benchmark. I very rarely do this is just in this instance. Um, I, I decided to go off script slightly. This is a sloppy course business. This is a real education company and I'd love to see yeah. you build a real education company. So basically here I'm talking about first of all taking it off of his hands so he can focus on the CEO shit because he was literally running the ads currently and you know I really just needed to stress that like you, you shouldn't be doing this at, at your current scale. You know, this client was doing multiple, multiple five figures a month. And once again, when you're an info product business, it's, you know, it's different from when you're a local mom and pop shop, that's, that's good money. So in his instance, once again, I told him, I want you to focus on the CEO shit. We'll take this off of your hands and we'll do this better than you're already doing. We'll free up time. And in the meantime, basically what we're doing for this client is uh, his current system was a little janky and involved some closers. And you know, he's paying 4K a month in commissions on closers, which that commission could just go to us. And you know, you're still spending the same amount in ad costs, except a machine is doing it rather than a human and a machine never asks for a raise. You know, a machine works 24 seven. So once again, I'm just planting the seeds in his mind about number one, you've imagined our retainer to be 4K. That's a seed that I want to plant. And I wanted to uh, plant the seed of like, look, in four months, why are you spending 4K a month on closers? Let's just take that off your hands and you don't have to pay a machine. A machine will work 24 seven. So once again, I'm really just trying to um, push the extreme or I'm trying to push the set point of what the perceived value is. Obviously he's mentioned 4,000 pound a month retainers, what his guess is as to what we charge. I've set the set point of like, look in three months, we're gonna get to a point where you don't have to pay 4K a month in closers because, and as I said, that sets that set point and then makes the 2,500 pound a month retainer, you know, look like a, look minuscule. Do this for 2,500 pounds a month. Uh, with a six month minimum. Usually we do um, three months minimum, but as I said, we're happy to charge less uh, just as long as we're working with people for uh, a longer period. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, so it's, so it's 2.5K per month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 it's not bad. At all that. Um, with, with the build in it uh, and, and we, we decided to extend this just because we know we know the value of the kind of funnels we do and we don't want yeah. someone to wait for us to build the funnel within the retainer instead of paying a two-day training with him and, and at the three months uh, yeah, I mean, I, I we, mean, don't, we don't get to see that and we don't get to to do what we do to get these funnels like really really you're, you're working other great. Your other option is you can do a three month minimum, but then we'll have to charge you 15K for the case study funnel build. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a no brainer. <laughs> True. So at this point, I pitched the price, I pitched the minimum retainer, and you can tell. Here's the thing I knew that he was sold, but there was something. Like it was, it was very, I mean, obviously just based on his tonality, like in any normal instance, I'd be like, oh my God, this is like, like he seemed so unenthusiastic. That was just sort of his t tonality. So it wasn't anything different from the rest of the call. But my point is, I knew that there was something. Like I knew that there was a logistical question. I knew that there wasn't, because to me, there's a very big difference between objection handling and logistics handling. Objection handling is, they're, you know, they're not sold on it, so they're trying to test. Whereas logistics handling is they're sold on it, but they just need to wrap their head around the logistics or what is actually being delivered in the service. And that comes through a little later on. But when basically he asked, I think I'll go ahead and skip this portion of it for you. But as I said, he has this current system that's doing multiple, multiple five figures a month. We're gonna come in, we're gonna improve the results on his current system, but we'd like to move him to a new system of actually selling his product. And we're gonna do that you know, for us. We've done it many a time. Usually we charge 20, 25K for funnel builds. And, you know, in this instance, it, it wouldn't be too hard for us. It would take Kieran and Danny probably around like a day or so. So, you know, it was, it was something I was willing to stomach in the price said to do a six month minimum. But anyways, my point is he was afraid that we were gonna move to this new system and just start running ads to this new system and just get rid of the old system. And he was afraid that like he would lose a, you know, a, a 50K a month business. So he was sold on the service. We just need to explain that look, you know, not only are we coming in and managing your current system to get sales, we're gonna improve it. We're gonna take your hands off of it. But simultaneously, we're gonna start building out this new funnel. We're gonna run some ads to it. And then once this is outperforming this, then we'll get rid of the old system. And I actually, you know, I'll, I'll show you a bit where I kind of explain it a little better because I, I wanted to make it very tangible for him. What you're doing from three days from now, you don't need to worry about your current ads anymore. From three okay. days from now, we're taking, from okay. three days from now, we're taking over, yeah. 
we're, we're taking over your current existing model, we're improving it, and we're getting costs down. And we're doing that, as I said, by the way, we run our ads as well as the copy. And while we're doing that, right? So while we're making you more money with your existing model, we're gonna oh, okay. build this new model that then will so so right now you're fired. Like we're we're firing you. Right now you're fired from your ads. Okay. And then hopefully in two months we can fire ourselves again by moving on to this new mall and we can also fire your sales, uh, you know, your DM, uh, your, your, your messaging guys and save you yeah. 4K a month in expenses that way because a machine is doing it and a machine never wants a raise, a machine never wants a raise in commission, is sick, is tired. Doesn't sleep. Yeah. Doesn't sleep, it just doesn't. doesn't yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that sounds good, really good. So that was, the, that's basically what I was hoping or just to make sure that the current model is getting improved at the same time you're uh, getting the better. Model. Okay, so that clip right there depicts it perfectly. Um, I told him, I was like, look, you're fired now. Okay, you're gonna go focus on the CEO shit. You're fired right now, we're gonna come in, we're gonna improve the model. And then while we're improving this model, we're building the new model, we're gonna fire ourselves, hopefully in two, three months. And once again, I think that's where I really landed. It hit home and you know, the, the deal was then closed. I just had to put his mind at ease on that logistical issue, not an objection. It was, to me, it wasn't objection handling. It was logistics handling. I forgot to mention the other thing that I mentioned there is you're gonna, you're firing yourself, you're firing your old model and we're saving you money. And you know, it's superfluous to pay four grand a month to this, to these closers when a machine will just do it. Amazing. So let's move forward. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Let's get you onboarded. Uh, can you just drop here on your Zoom chat? Uh, can you drop your company details? Yeah. And uh, and I'll go ahead and send the invoice over now. We'll get it squared away and we'll get you onboarded as well. So it's at this point, I'm like, amazing. Should we move forward? He says, yes. I go, can you drop your company details here on Zoom? And um, this is the point at which I'm sending the invoice. That is at minute 25. This recording goes on until 47 minutes. So it takes 22 minutes to get the payment settled and get everything squared away. And the reason that is is basically because he had an annoying credit limit. It's a European client, uh, especially outside of the UK. Uh, like US is a good UK's seems fine with like limits and stuff, but I've especially found it when we go more towards like Germany, Switzerland, like those sorts of clients, like they always have an issue with their credit limits. It's like, I swear, like they have this, I've worked with multi seven figure year businesses that have like credit limits of like 2000 a month. It's, it's, it's nuts and, and they can't do anything about it. I think I've just been very scarred from all the clients I've worked with in Germany in the past. That's always, always been a problem. And like, you guys know, I hate manual invoicing. Client needs to be auto build and that's happened before multiple times. Anyways, back to my point. I know some of you guys, when a client says yes, you go, awesome, I'll send over the invoice, I'll send over the contract, I'll send over the onboarding. Uh, -uh. I ain't leaving that call. I am not leaving that call until payment. It is obvious that I am not leaving that call until payment, because to me, unless a payment comes through, I don't even care if the payment is for one pound. As long as I have that, that client's card on file and they made some sort of commitment, to me, they ain't a client. Sorry to cut out there for a sec, but um, yeah, as I said, unless I take payment, they ain't a client. So um, yeah, I had to charge them just a thousand pounds. That's all they could do. And uh, I mean, I recorded, I was like, you know what, actually it's been the next day. Why don't I charge the extra 1500 pounds to bring it to 2,500 pounds for the first month retainer. And I did the whole spiel and then I realized it wasn't recording. Let's see, let's see if this will work. There you go, you can see 1500 plus invoice paid on Stripe. Yeah, guys, that was the first breakdown of the first deal. Uh, 2,500 pound a month, uh, which is not exciting at all, but six month minimum is uh, a place where I am, to me, 2,500 pound plus six month minimum is, I feel as good about as like a 3,500 pound a month uh, plus three months minimum. So yeah, that's the first deal. All right, so when I was going to record the uh, second call analysis, um, turns out I didn't record it, but I'm gonna throw in the last part of the, okay, so with this call, basically, it was a demo call with Danny, then I had, Danny and I had a call with them, and it was three business partners. So demo call, first call, and then it kills me, it kills me. But we had a third call. Like, I guess the first demo call with Danny doesn't count. So like, if Danny has a demo call and then I do one call, still technically it's a one call close, technically on my end. But um, yeah, I had to move it to two calls because once again, with some clients, like I actually have to, I, I have to wait longer. I'm, I think I've matured a lot as an agency owner over the past year or so, uh, in terms of things like communication, in terms of things like, you know, just adding a bit more human element into it. You guys know I like to build a machine. Like that's my goal in life. I like to build machines that I can step away from and then run automatically without me. And my agency does that. My agency at this point 
100% hands down does that. I've gone on my point to the agency where I've removed myself from everything. There was even a six month period where I didn't go to any client checking calls at all. And to be honest, I've been pretty bad with that this year too. But my point is like sales is the last thing that I need to remove myself from them. And then at that point, I will have a totally automated agency. And I, I think I'll try at one point to see if we can bring on clients without me even doing the final close. Obviously now Danny does the demo call, but anyways, my, my point is I did a three call close with them rather than a two call, you know, the demo and then close. And I'll throw in the last portion of our second call where basically I said, I'll speak to you guys on Thursday, blah, blah. We set up a time. I told them to check out some of uh, the case study video uh, just so they could see a little bit more about our philosophy prior to that call. And yeah, that was, I believe on Monday, referring to the Thursday call and today's Friday, as you would have seen on that iPad screenshot or live thing. And as I said, the deals were yesterday. So hopefully everything makes sense to you. Uh, I wish I had the clip, but I will just tell you guys anecdotally what happened. It's a 4,000 pound a month deal, five month minimum. And then from there, same as all of our deals, it's rolling month by month. I am not gonna lie, uh, this deal I was, I was I, initially I was gonna say no. I was gonna say to no to the deal and initially kind of the, the expectation I set on the first call was it would be 4,000 pound a month plus anywhere from 10 to 25, no, sorry, anywhere from 15 to 25% return on ad spend. And the reason that I was feeling not as uh, excited about this deal. I was excited about the people. I like the company. Uh, just about the deal in general was because of the, once again, the complexity of it. Like, I don't like complexity as an agency owner. I like, the reason that we're able to get such good results is like we try to avoid as much complexity as a, at our agency internally and with our clients. So with this client, we have to build them out a case study funnel. So yeah, my two options were let me charge them 15,000 pounds up front and then they go into a rolling month by month contract with us. Let's say a 2,500 pound a month plus 25% return on ad spend. But I decided I'm gonna blend the two and this is what I've been doing a lot this year with the agency is, I mean, you've seen, I think it was like, three weeks ago or something where I closed that client for 10,000 pound for the case study funnel build up front. And then for the ad side of things, it was just 30% return on ad spend, the only performance, like pure performance fee client we have. I guess technically I did charge him 10K up front. But anyways, my point is I, I genuinely, I was gonna go on the call and tell him uh, no, and I was gonna refer him to one of our strategic referral partners. And once again, Danny swayed me last minute. Uh, Danny's just a trooper. Um, but that's the thing, I have that sort of trust with Danny now at this point. You know, he's been a part of my team for, for two years at this point. And he was like, no, dude, I got this shit. But once again, for us, I've built dozens of, of funnels and webinars for people. So, so you know, for, for me and the team to build a case study funnel, it only takes a day. So if it was 4,000 pounds and three month minimum, it wouldn't be worth it. Initially it was gonna be obviously our regular three month minimum. It would have been 4,000 pounds plus 25% return on ad spend. I decided to do 4,000 pounds, but five month minimum and wipe the return on ad spend. The reason I actually wanted to wipe the return on ad spend was because I like return on ad spend when we have a barometer to go off of. First of all, this would be a phone call funnel and like, it's just a nightmare tracking a phone call funnel for percentage of ROAS. I only like to do percentage of ROAS when it's an info product business where there's no phone call funnel. It's just the actual purchase on a sales page or when it's an e-commerce business because there's no attribution is so much more clear and clear cut. Anyways, ended up closing them for 4,000 uh, pounds, five month minimum. And then from there rolling month by month. Towards the end when the founder said, it, hey, um, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks, uh, I wanna give you some feedback on, on your sales process. Uh, I could spot all of your sales tactics. Uh, and I was like, oh, uh, what do you mean? Like what? Uh, and he was like, oh, you know, the fact that you were like, I need to go away, I need to speak with Danny, and then I can come back to you on a price, you know, making us think whether we, you would bring us on or not. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, like that wasn't a sales tactic. Like legitimately, I'm at a point right now where like, I, I mean, we've always been like this, but first of all, I have a guarantee at the agency. So everything is to risk, like everything is to lose. Like I'm at risk because at the end of the day, like, if I don't get a client of results, like I'm going to refund them. And, and that's just something we uphold ourselves to and the guarantee that we have uh, as an agency. So I have a hundred percent of the risk. I've hedged all of your risk. You know, obviously I didn't say it with this much energy and emotion, but like, that's the thing. Like for me, I'm at a point right now in my agency where like we physically can't lose our clients money. If we do, we refund our service fees. So it's like, so imagine a service where if you go to them, they guarantee you that they'll make you money. And if they don't, they'll refund you their service fee. You end up getting a pretty long line of people, but all of the risk is on that company's part because they need to decide, okay, who can we, like they have to honor that guarantee. So, you know, that's why like, it, it's funny that he mentioned that because um, there was no sales tactics involved. And the other thing that I mentioned to him, I was like, look, I, you know, I've learned this through years and years of sales and marketing any sort of added friction really ruins the likeliness of the sale. In fact, these clients were eight, I believe like eight minutes late to the call. I was actually about to jump off entirely. I'll put the email thread up. They came on and, and there was some sort of glitch. I don't, I don't know what happened, but there was some sort of glitch where apparently local time to them, it, it was 6.45 that the call was scheduled at. And for me, it was five o'clock. And so I'm not sure what happened there, but my point is even adding that extra call meant that I almost didn't have that call and I almost didn't close them. 
So like, you know, it, it's funny um, that he mentioned that because seriously guys, like the reason that I like a one call closed, yes, now kind of I have the demo call and then I do it in a one call close or I guess you could say that's two call, you know, whatever your opinion is on that. Last year would literally be like, I've never spoken to them before and we get on a call and you know, within 45 minutes, they're, they're punching their credit card details for me to build them 6,800 pounds a month. So anyways, back to my point, I prefer a two call close if my two calls are guaranteed. But I always know that any sort of extra um, friction that you add, any extra sort of call that you add, it's going to fuck things up. That's why I like the one call close. I don't like the one call close because I'm impatient or I'm in a rush. I like it or I liked it. I guess technically I'm still doing it, as I said, because you know Danny does a 15 minute demo, then I do the one call close. But anyways, my point is I like it because there's less friction. And when there's less friction, you're more likely to close the sale. So yeah, I just thought that was uh, something uh, interesting to, to add about that call. So yeah, ladies and gents, um, I'm sorry for those of you guys who aren't real like SMMA nerds and geeks or sales geeks. Like, uh, I, you know, this is always the thing that I kind of weigh up on this channel is like, uh, you know, do I show you guys the really boring stuff, like the really boring intimate shit? Or do I show you guys the fun, like lifestyle that, you know, it's, it, it, I try to do a bit of both. Um, I can imagine for some people who are more into like the lifestyle and what I do day to day and maybe biohacking and my social life and this and that, like, you know, I get this might have been a little bit boring for you, but um, yeah, those were the breakdowns. And yeah, I got uh, two more calls later today. As I said, one I know for sure is not a, a, a closable sales call. You know, one is a, for me, I need to understand the company. As I said, realistic, like 99% chance we won't work with them because they're a, a B2B platform. So I'll have to wrap my head around that. So that's that. And then I got my other call, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Danny had the demo call with him yesterday rebooked in now today for the 45 minute discovery call and we are feeling very, very positive about it. It's an e-commerce business and as you have just seen with info product businesses, this, like people ask me all the time, you know, why do you tell people don't run ads for info product businesses when you're a beginner? And hopefully this has showed you why. Look, if you wanna become an expert in ads, at funnels, at email marketing, at automation, be my guest, try to compete against us. It won't happen. Like, it's funny, people are like, aren't you creating more competition for yourself? And it's like, do you really think a beginner could do what I do? It's impossible. I'm operating in the hardest niche in the world and I'm dealing with clients, you know, it's not like every single client that comes to us is our perfect ideal client. They are in terms of personality and in terms of culture fit, but sometimes we gotta do things like build out a case study funnel for them, clean up some of their automation, clean up some of their emails. It's a pain in the ass, I hate it. That's why whenever we get in a really good e-commerce lead, I mean, hallelujah, e-commerce we can do with our eyes closed. For us, at least, maybe it's just because we're so used to working in such a, a harsh environment, such a harsh arena, which is info products, and such a complicated arena that for us, when we have an e-commerce client, like as I said, we could do it with our eyes closed. But anyways, hopefully that also clears some things up for you guys, which is guys, info product businesses are not easy at all. There's a lot of other stuff outside of just the ads that come into play and it can be a bit of a nightmare sometimes. You really gotta know what you're doing uh, if you wanna make sure that your clients get great results. E-commerce, e-commerce is, is a hell of a lot easier, but once again, e-commerce is a hell of a lot harder than local businesses. So. For a beginner, I would say local businesses or e-commerce, whatever, you, you know, whichever you wanna do. But just trust me, do not run ads for info product businesses because I said 80% of my clients are info product businesses and you've seen right now, the mental fuckery and gym gymnastics that I have to navigate to figure out whether the deal is worth it because of the extra little things that we have to do, which is now at this point, 50% of our deals, we're gonna, there's little automations that we have to do in order for us to start running the ads, a little bit of a case study funnel, which as I said, at this point only takes around a day or so, but still, it takes time. So anyways, with risk that I continue rambling on too much, I'm gonna get back to work. And then I've got my sales calls later today. So quick little intermission between deal one and deal two to talk about Gadgi. Now over the next 12 months, I want to take a lot of different strides with Gadgi. Uh, first of all, finally managed to get the domain. So it's Gadgi.com now rather than Gadgi clothing. Gadgi clothing kills me. I hate it so much uh, because once again, like I want this in a couple years to be a standalone brand. And you know, I had... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the reason we're laughing is because Pete, to piss me off all the time, calls it merch. And I'm like, it's not, merch. I'm like, it's not merch. It, it doesn't say my name anywhere. Like, I remember my mom, my mom was- What's the brand name? What's the brand name? But doesn't say it anywhere. <laughs> doesn't say it anywhere. I was FaceTiming my mom yesterday, she's like, and I'm showing her them. And she's like, but it does not say Gedgy anywhere. And I'm like, that's because I wouldn't wear that. Like, if it had someone else's name on it, I wouldn't wear it. Like, I like it to be standalone. So yeah, Pete always calls it merch to piss me off. <laughs> but look, you know, I want it to be a standalone brand. We're in three years and that's kind of why like, I, I had p different people, you know, tell me to name it different things. Some people were like, oh, name it Private Victories and that's the name of the new podcast and I own the domain. PrivateVictories.com, look at the proud owner. I own a lot of domains actually, but anyways, there's one that I'm trying to buy right now that uh, it's estimated at $78,000. So that'll be a fun one. The new agency one. What is it? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs>
Yeah. So what are you calling it? Yeah. So look, I want to be a standalone brand, um, which is why in three years, if someone's like, oh, what, that's a dope shirt. What shirt is that? Someone can just be like, Gaji. Yes, I get it. It's half of my last name because my full name is like Gaji Magomedov. But like, I get it. That's my, you know, half of my last name. But still, I want it to be in three years. I, I don't, I want it to be disassociated for myself. So it's not merch anymore in three years. Ah, <laughs> Pete. Ah, very funny. Does it say a name anywhere? <laughs> so really exciting news um, in the next two, three months. Uh, Ari uh, done the interviews, um, bring on a influencer manager. So um, within the next 12 months, I want to scale this brand to seven figures in revenue. And the team and I were talking about it. We're like, obviously our bread and butter, we can just do this. I mean, we can do that within like three months with ads. Because also the other thing that I will say guys is I don't give a shit if I make a penny from this. Like you guys know my different businesses, like my agency, depending on what month it is and how much we're spending on ads. Like for example, this year we haven't spent any money on cold ads. So it's been a very profitable year in terms of margins, but no matter what month it is, I will never dip below 75% margins with my agency. Usually it's anywhere between like 75 to 90%. That's my agency. And I'm very strict on that because that's my lifestyle business. That's my, that's my fuck you money business. Then I've got my education company where the margins are anywhere between like 25 and 35% and people are like, oh, you know, how are your margins so, so bad on that? It's like, well, you try to have seven full-time employees. You try it. The sass is coming out today, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Look, if you want to spend 30,000 pounds a month on advertising costs, if you want to spend 4,000 pounds a month on software, if you want to spend another 35 grand a month on staff costs, be my guest. If you want to go ahead and build multiple schools in Nepal, be my guest. If you want to spend 20 grand on a party where you don't even sell anything. Like, look, people throw parties and then at the end they upsell that. Like, guys, I did the Grow Your Agency party, which by the way, we're going to do every single year. I did that and I didn't even, the only thing that I sold there was the early, early prototypes of Gadgi and all that money went to charity anyways. I'm the idiot who spends 1500 pounds to take some of his six figure students in London to afternoon tea. Once again, once I go traveling again to LA, New York, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. Nobu Malibu with the six figure students on the company Amex. So, you know, hopefully that makes it a little clearer that like, guys, I'm not just banking 100% of everything from education company. The margins are really shit, <laughs> to be honest. So we've got, IG Media with 75 to 90% margins. We've got uh, Grow Your Agency with between 25 to 35% margins. And then we've got Gadgie, which at the moment is, what? If you say merch, I will, <laughs> I, 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 I will, I will kick you out of the house. <laughs> then we've got Gadgie, which at the moment has around 60% margins. With Gadgie, I couldn't care less if I make no money. That's honestly the business where I'm like, if we do seven figures in revenue, and let's say after cost of production and whatnot, we're left with 600K. If all that money goes towards uh, advertising, influencers, party, I couldn't care less. So in two months or so, we've got a full-time influencer manager coming on board. So we still need to finalize and I just need to confirm it. I need to get my mind right about it, but like looking like 95% sure. Basically what she'll be doing is sending out the different garments to different micro influencers and just getting them to promote it and post it. And then we'll also be spending 10, 20 grand a month on influencer promotions. It said the team and I talked about it and we're like, look, we could scale this thing up to 300K a month through ads in three months. That's that's easy for us. But you know, I think with this brand, um, I'm, I'm trying to build a brand. So it's much better for me to do it through influencers, through, as I said, the, even the ones that are in London, sending them out the garments and then the influencer manager, she will arrange with my new creative manager, basically the new hire, once again, for great agency, that blood sucking leech that I have, you know, the new creative manager for that. So he's the, he does all the video, photo, editing, et cetera, et cetera. Then they'll liaise and then she will join him. And then when, when we send them the product, they'll go and do a 30 minute photo shoot for Gadji. And then they'll, they'll also do a free 30 minute photo shoot for the influencer for their own brand as sort of value add. But yeah, anyways, Tons of cool stuff coming with that. So this is season two. Um, I am, you know, season one was incredible. Season two, I'm so pumped for. And season three is something else. So yeah, season two doesn't really have a name. Unfortunately, you know, the first one was uh, black, the black marble collection. This is the white marble, except in the end, I decided I don't like the marbling on white. So we just went for regular white. And dude, this thing is so comfy. <laughs> All right, so let me show you. This is the marginal gains one. Uh, as you can see right there, it says marginal gains around the corner and then I'll show you guys the back. As you can see, honestly, this thing is so plush. And yeah, for me, I, you know, many of you guys have asked before, like, let me try and find another example. Uh, like for example, this, uh, this shirt, like I, I don't mind little things on the front and big patterns on the back. For me, I can't wear big patterns on the front. Like that's just a, a no-go. I like something small, something very like um, discreet or kind of like um, esoteric on the front. And then once again, on the back, that's where I like the, the bigger print. So as I said, this is the marginal gains one. Now, I mean, look, uh, this needs no explanation. This is the private victories. This is a fan favorite. Uh, I know you guys, I know how much you guys love this. This sold out hella quick when we did the black marble collection. 
Now, this is another fan favorite that we, you know, we didn't do private victories. And by the way, one thing that I will mention is it said season one, 2019. That'll be obviously changed to season two, 2020. These aren't the final, final prototypes either. Um, we kind of changed the, the fitting on this. This is a little bit more, um, this is a little bit of a thicker material than the this uh, the version one of the hoodies. Uh, we just wanted to test it out, but I'm going to go back to the version one. I prefer much more. Also, even things like the quality of the strings here, like this is this is a prototype version. So, you know, it's, it's nowhere near the final thing. So this will be a lot more uh, light. Uh, kind of like kind of like this one I mean this is the first ever prototype not first ever but this is the first ever like close to final prototype for the gadget uh, for the hoodie and guys I mean you can see like even on the final version um, with the final version it's raised so obviously this kind of pops a little more but um, yeah I've, I've lived in this this thing has come with me to Nepal this thing has come with me to dates I've closed clients in this thing I have I've been to multiple continents in this thing like you know this thing is uh, this thing's my baby um, but yeah as you can see like this is a lot um, a thinner uh, this one's a lot thinner uh, than this one and this is kind of our usual uh, quality in terms of like the paneling and stuff guys this ain't no print on demand shit okay this ain't no print on demand shit this definitely isn't merch <laughs> triggered <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, guys, I will show you the last one. Now, this is, for me personally, this is my favorite. I hate text. I hate, like, I don't know, guys, just in general, like, I'm not a big, um, I, have a, I have a very specific certain style. I, d I don't like text, etc., etc. But this message, come on, that, that bleed through, like, this too shall pass. Something about the way that this bleeds down reminds me of, like, I don't know, just, like, sadness like dreary like weirdly enough something about it reminds me of mascara like crying like something about it i look at this i'm like yeah it brings me back to that feeling that we all have which is just like man shit gets tough and especially everything that's going on in the world right now like dude from a mental health perspective like i think everyone in the world right now is, is hurting and struggling so especially like, like this was designed before everything that's going on in the world started happening but like, I'm so, so excited to get this message out because I believe in 2020, like this is, it's never been more important to keep this close to your heart. And um, yeah, I'm just, I, I love this one so much. And then here on the front, it says, do not fear. And then it's a little gadgy, just like, you know, coming out uh, the sides like that, like twisting around. So yeah, this is personally my favorite. I'd say in terms of design, like this one's my favorite, like I, I, I fuck with this. But just in terms of the message of the other one, I really, really love it. So um, yeah, ladies and gents, Gadgy scaling it to seven figures with zero profit, which I'm looking forward to. And look, that, that's not to say that like, you know, we won't make any money, but like I'm saying, I, I put things in different buckets in my mind. As I said, uh, my agency, I'm never comfortable ever letting that slip below 65%. Like that's not what that business is there for me for. My education company, I would never feel comfortable letting it slip below 20%. Because at the end of the day, that's in a different bucket in my mind. But like, I'm a business owner and that business is a blood sucking leech. So I still want to make some money from it. So that's the education company. But for Gadget, honestly, if we end up making zero, I'm not too bothered because um, this is like my passion project. And I've been wanting to do this for years. I've always put it mentally in my mind as like, oh, this is a distraction. Um, but I think for me, if I can build this thing up to seven figures, multi seven figures a year and, you know, not care about the profit at the end of the day, like three, four years later down the line, I can come in, I can streamline the, the expenses and stuff like that. And yes, I know from a, a, a focus perspective and, you know, in 2018 and, and especially like first half of 2019, I was all about focus efficiency. Like this thing is, doesn't contribute to my final goal. And then I realized like, man, like sometimes you just got to do stuff that nourishes your soul. And like, this makes me happy. Like this makes me very, very happy. My other businesses make me very, very happy but this is the one that makes me happy, but doesn't make sense financially, I'd say. As much as other ones cost me and the running costs and this and that, like they still make sense financially. This one as it currently stands, doesn't. Like Gadgy really doesn't make much profit, but instead it just makes me happy. And sometimes you gotta do things that, that um, you know, bring out that, that childlike spirit in you, so. Yeah, Gadget will be coming out in four to six weeks, I believe. But a little while back, we did the final restock on the first season. We've also brought down the price of the hoodies from 65 to 55 pounds. So I believe a private victories is sold out. Dreams is only left in XL. And then the Youth Never Satisfied hoodies, um, that we have a little bit more stock of that. That's been brought down from 65 to 55. And yeah, link is in the description. Go ahead, pick it up because probably within the next week or two, uh, that will all be gone. And you have to wait like four or five, six weeks until the new season comes out. And, uh, the dynamic with we just understanding you know, does it make sense to push specific lines right now or wait till we kind of reinvent those to be a little bit more modern and um, effective? But anyway, so yoga and meditation is a big line. Um, kind of organic foods in general. Um, some of these, you know, these trend things that we represent, essential oils. Um, we do a lot with Himalayan salt. So not just like the, the salt lamps, 
these uh, night lights, but then also the uh, edible, so fine salts, granulated salts, you know, all tamalian basically. Um, a little bit about the way that we like to operate is we, as I said, we're, we're expensive, um, but there's no extra costs for our 15th floor swanky London office for our, you know, you're not, pay, you're not funding our Nespresso uh, addiction. Um, you know, we're priced based entirely on, on value. Um, another thing that we do is we, we guarantee a return on ad spend. Um, so that's 1.5 X. So that basically means it's physically impossible for you to lose money. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, it means basically, and, and, and this is why, uh, you know, we have that first 15 minute demo call because Danny is, as my CMO, like I have to have a lot of trust with him. Um, it's only happened once before in our history where we haven't gone to client results and we had to refund them. Uh, and I, you know, uh, my number one aim is to make sure that never happens again. Uh, so that's why, you know, I need uh, Danny and I have a lot of trust between each other um, because at the end of the day, the risk is all on our end. Um, you know, we're, we're an organization where you come to us and it's, it's impossible to lose money. And, you know, so, so the downside is, is none. We mitigate your downside entirely. The upside is, um, you know, I'm not saying we'll make you 1.2 million in five months return on ad spend, like, um, but you know, the upside is, is pretty high up there, uh, yeah. especially in your market. Right. All right. Amazing. Is there anything else that uh, you need from us? No, I think um, it's, everything's clear. So Awesome. I, awesome. Uh, yeah, all I can say is uh, it's an honor to have you a part of the, the agency and I uh, really look forward to what we're going to be able to do together. Yeah, me too. Awesome. See you on Monday. Right. Thanks, on Monday. Guys. Bye -bye. Thanks too. Uh, <laughs> that Just, uh, I've, I felt, I felt smooth. I felt smooth at sales call. I know what it is. What? It, it's, it's the first one that is as early as this one. And you have a very different like energy, resemblance, everything. It's, we need to set them up all, all in the morning. Yeah, I agree. In the mornings, I'm morning on your, on your, on your kind of evening. I'm excited. I'm excited. Lots of new clients, lots of, of good clients. So that's Three new clients in 24 hours. Let's get it. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very happy. Three closes in 24 hours. I got another sales call in an hour. Um, that one won't be, I do. Do you want to see him actually? Boom. Three out of three, baby. Ah, I'm too late to do that. Three closes in the past 24 hours. Uh, very, very awesome. Uh, this client, I, I think you guys may have seen me mention it, but like there's certain times when it comes to billing, like if someone is like them and four people and they're like, oh, I need to send it to my like uh, my in-house bookkeeper or accountant. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, whereas this organization does actually have like five warehouses. Like I forgot to ask specifically, but must be like at least 20 plus members in their team. And um, I actually know that, look, I've had it with Dutch clients before. I've had it with German clients before. I've had it with, actually never worked with an Italian client. Nope, that's a lie. Worked with an Italian client before. I had it with them. It's it's the card limits. It's, it's this weird thing. So he's gonna send it to his account and he's gonna try and pay via prepaid card. The other thing he was like, look, if we can do PayPal, then I can pay on the spot. So like, once again, you know, <laughs> Danny just went, uh, go flex on the sales channel. Um, he, want, he wants you to do a little flex. Once again, there's a difference between objection handling and like logistics handling, like actually just trying to figure out something logistically. And he, for me, it's also is very clear when a client is like, but I can do this. And, and for me, I was weighing it up. I was like, ah, uh, is it worth it just doing PayPal to close them now? I was like, no, no, stop, <laughs> stop it. Don't be an idiot. So yeah, all in all, I am, uh, I'm very happy. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> I forgot to tell you how much we closed them for. Uh, it's 3,500 pounds, but a five month minimum. And I would always rather undercharge than overcharge. This client is doing 90% of their business wholesale and 10% of it e-commerce, but they like to obviously flip the script on that. Obviously they're making very, very good money, just not as much from the e-commerce side of things. So. For me, you know, these past few clients, I'm really undercharging for my normal price, but I'm starting to get into the mind frame of like, what is the guaranteed, not even the lifetime value of the client, but what's the guaranteed value of the client? Because look, at the end of the day, you could, you could have a client that you're charging, let's say uh, 8K a month with a three month minimum. So that comes out to 24K. Or you can have a client that you're charging 4K a month, but then it's a six month minimum and you're still achieving the same thing, except 8K a month is a very big difference uh, in service fee than 4K a month. Now, yes, with the 8K a month client, I know that our retention is longer than that, 
But my point is like, I'm starting to think more in terms of like the guaranteed value of the client. So yeah, all in all, I am a, I'm a happy man. All right, so second sales call of the day. As I said, I just know immediately this is not going to be a sales call. Um, well, I mean, technically it is, but my point is even on my end, whether he was ready to pull out his card or whether he's ready to pull out his card within two minutes or not, doesn't matter for me. I, I need to gather some information. This is in a client I feel comfortable signing on the spot. So let's get into it. Oh, um, let's just wait for, yeah, for him to also leave. So sorry, I'm a tad late. That's fine, no that's fine. All good? Yes, How's sir. Going? Good, good. Yourself? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Back in back in somewhat normal. I'm in the office again. I was about to uh, say, so, how, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, good 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 feeling. Finally. Mm. <laughs> Jonathan also says only says good things about you. He's, <laughs> in, every time we're we're meeting, he says you're 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 his savior <laughs> for for everything that he's doing right now. So so I needed to call you, right? I needed to contact you. Yeah, jo <laughs> Jonathan's the best. I love him. One or two new leads per day. Per, per week, one or two weeks per week, mm -hmm. just to be sure. But these come at an 80% conversion rate. Um, and uh, for us, this is tremendous because our ticket size is between 10K and uh, 500K a year, right? Just to give you that, wow. that, that perspective here, <laughs> right? Awesome. And how are you getting most of your clients at the moment? I'm speaking on conferences and I'm approaching them and I'm talking to them and that's how we basically convert them and outbound, you know, very cold approach to say, hey, we have won this, we have won that nice client, you know, let, let, let's get into the conversation. So the reason I say this is because I know my numbers to a T and when we run ads for the agency, because at the end of the day, that's B2B and B2B ads can be a pre uh, pretty tough. I'm bulletproof, I'm confident, like I will spend 6,000 uh, pounds to acquire a client because that's our at least in 2019, that's our average um, monthly retainer. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm cool spending the first month, uh, you know, when I know our lifetime value is a, a lot higher than that. So my point is, if you were to run ads, how much would you be comfortable spending to acquire a client? So ladies and gentlemen, uh, you'll notice a little bit of a change of scenery. Uh, you will see that in the next vlog, which will be the house tour for uh, this place. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna roll into a sales call that I had yesterday. It's currently Tuesday. All those clips you saw, the first two sales calls, the first two closes were from Thursday, the two that I did analysis of. Then the main vlog portion of this was done on Friday. You saw the first sales call that I closed on the Friday, which was a 3,500 one. And then you saw the second one, which I mentioned, I was like, look, this is not gonna be a close. Uh, this is gonna be a touch point and it's business to business. So the likeliness of me signing a client on my side, once again, for me, it was like, I didn't feel comfortable bringing them on, was like 10%. Anyways, so that was Friday, uh, as I said, today's Tuesday. Yesterday, we actually had a follow-up call with them. What I wanted him to do was come into the meeting and give me the lifetime value of a client. Obviously, they do business to business, very, very high ticket, or it can be very high ticket. And I wanted him to give me a number that he was comfortable spending in order to acquire a client for his business. So yeah, basically he came back with the number and it fit into the range of what we thought we could get a client for him for based on the cost per scheduled call. So it would be a case study funnel. At the end, they'd book in a demo call. Pretty much the exact same thing that we do for our own agency. So obviously we know that model very, very well, running ads for my own agency. But yeah, wasn't feeling super confident, but after running the number, has basically decided, look, it's worth bringing this client on. So I'll go ahead and swing over to that sales call. So now you guys are actually gonna see four sales calls in one video. <laughs> Pete shaking his head from all the editing that has gone into this. <laughs> Can everyone go ahead and drop a bunch of love for Pete down in the comments? I, thought, I don't think you guys understand how long it takes to edit one of these vlogs. And he's doing all of that while still running his agency. He signed his fourth client last week. So. Can we do like some sort of animation <laughs> in your head or something? I'm not gonna do that for myself, bro. <laughs> okay, all right. Everyone go drop some love for P, as I said. Anyways, just gonna play some of those clips now. I want to bring the retainer down to only 2,500 pounds a month uh, for a six month minimum. And then from there, it's rolling month by month. You can cancel anytime. So really what we want to do is we want to try to blend the, um, the advertising side of things as well as the uh, case study funnel build. So that way, that way in six months, even if the advertising side doesn't go as well as initially as said, I'm, I'm trying to give you like really shitty numbers here just to give us mm -hmm. uh, room. But mm -hmm. even if that goes terribly wrong, uh, 
you're still paying the same amount as my as the cheapest price I charge uh, people for case study funnel builds. And it, like, you know, once you have that case study, it's an asset. Like it, you, you know, you you give me a, a two bedroom a beachfront property in Miami, or you give me a, a, a well performing case study or a well performing webinar. I'll, t- I'll take the case study of the webinar because it's, it's much more of an asset. If I look at what it's produced for, you know, my own webinar funnels on multi seven figures, um, the case study funnel for the agency is almost on seven figures in terms of clients it's uh, provided. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of what we wanted to do just so that way we could price ourselves as low as possible to give ourselves as much breathing room in terms of getting results. Yeah. 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 Very good. So, 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 so just to summarize, you say 2,500 per month for six months. Is that, is that right? It's a six month minimum. And then from there it's rolling. Yeah. You can cancel anytime. You know, okay. R- rolling, rolling month. And, and just to, to, to have the budgets right. Um, how do we, how do we increase basically the ad spend? H- how do we, how do we do that? Just to have a, a, a better picture on, on, on the kind of the budget to allocate here. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. Okay, brilliant. Well, send me over the 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 the, the contract so we can we can get that done, and uh, and then uh, I'll confirm that, and then and then we're good to go. So I I I'm yeah, quite happy about it. Okay, amazing. So basically, here's what we do. We're uh, I think this is more of a an American thing, even though I live in London. Uh, basically, we get the invoice sorted right now, so we get payment sorted. I'll ping over the invoice right now. Uh, and that locks you in as a client. And then we're going to get you set up on Slack, right? And then uh, after that, uh, we're also going to set up your strategy session. Uh, we'd rather get started sooner rather than later. Uh, and then yeah. and then uh, I'm just going to message Kieran on Slack the, the actual specific details. And uh, I'll ping over a hello sign within the next two to three hours as well. So what you saw there was 2,500 pounds a month, six month minimum. The reason that I wanted to do this is I really, really want to underprice myself here simply because to be honest, I told them up front, we couldn't offer any sort of guarantee with this client. And I, you know, I was almost on the call. I was almost trying to get him not to sign. I was, I truly was making the situation as terrible as possible. We were using the worst numbers we could possibly use, assuming that he had a 15% close rate at the moment. It's around 80%. Granted that's with the organic leads that he gets still, nonetheless, um, I was just trying to use the worst possible numbers. And the way that I was thinking about it mentally was I charge clients anywhere from 15 to 25,000 pounds for a funnel build. So with that said, we're doing a case study funnel build for him now you know it doesn't take any of my time Kieran and Danny just get it done in one day and, and that's it I don't need to be involved with it but nonetheless so this is 15,000 pounds guaranteed obviously it's 2,500 with a six-month minimum so 15,000 pounds guaranteed and then from there rolling month by month so I guess the way that I framed it mentally in my head was if worse comes to worse and we don't manage to perform with the ads because yes, we absolutely kick ass for our own agency when we do business to business ads. But like this is a, it's more of a, a niche client to be honest. It's a, it's a very interesting business. So yeah, I guess for my own sort of pride slash, um, for me to feel good about this deal, I needed to make it low enough. Uh, and as I said, I needed, to, I needed it to be a situation where if worse comes to worst, uh, it's almost like they just did a, a six pay on a, on a case study phone build. But for me, that's fine because I said, I, you know, Kieran and Danny know what to do at this point. We can get a case study funnel done in a day. A webinar I will need to do over the space of two days and it'll need to be in person, but case studies, uh, you know, Kieran, Danny, the team can get it done in a day, no issue. So that's that. Let me think anything else interesting to, oh yeah, the, the organization is a couple different people. So as much as I like to do a one call close, be proficient in this and that, at the end of the day, there are still other people involved at, in some instances. And you, you know, I'm, I'm still in the business to business services industry. So, you know, I can't shove my protocol down people's throats. I can only nudge them. So uh, in this instance, he had to send over the contract to the team. They got it signed and we actually have our onboarding call tomorrow. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was a behemoth vlog. Once again, for anyone who you know is more interested in the lifestyle, maybe the biohacking stuff, maybe the social stuff. I apologize. This has been a one hour, really like intensive sort of show of uh, kind of what goes on deal flow, how I think about deal flow in 2020 with my agency. But yeah, that's what it's like. Um, running an agency, you know, as I said, for me, it's a bunch of mental gymnastics as to do I take a client on? Do I not take a client on? Uh, as I said, with all of our clients, except for this last one, 
uh, in 2020, I offer a guarantee. I mean, even before 2020, I didn't offer a guarantee, but the only one time in history with our agency that we have been able to be ROI positive on our ad campaigns, I've refunded them because you know I don't want someone's money if, if we haven't made them money. So yeah, long story short, uh, first client was 2,500 pound a month, six month minimum. Second client was 4,000 pounds a month, five month minimum. Third client was 3,500 pounds a month, five month minimum. And fourth client was 2,500 pounds a month, six month minimum. So for me, what it comes down to is guaranteed income. That first and fourth deal, they're both 15,000 pounds guaranteed bottom line. So that's 30,000 pounds. That second deal is 20,000 pounds. So that's 50,000 pounds. And that, and then that third deal was 17 and a half thousand pounds. So that's 67 and a half thousand pounds guaranteed contractually. So that's what I believe around $80,000. So for me, that's $80,000 basically profit. You guys need to remember, I'm not bringing up, you know, I don't have to bring on any new team members or anything like that in order to service these clients. So that is $80,000 guaranteed in one weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, I am super pumped because, uh, you know, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. Uh, I've just been so bogged down the past six, seven months uh, in terms of the education company, uh, the, the schools in Nepal, uh, Gadji, the clothing line, a lot, a lot of hiring over the past three, four months. The team is almost nine people now. Earlier today, I just made the job offer and we just brought on the new performance marketer for the agency. There's a lot of rebranding going on in different places. Most of the stuff that's gone on this year has been behind the scenes that I can't tell you guys about, which I hate it when people say that because usually that just means they're doing nothing with their life. But guys, genuinely you'll find out about most of that stuff. And I've even teased, I think, few portions of it uh, in this video. But yeah, long story short, which I always say, but I never actually follow through with, is for the next four or five months, I can focus on my agency and uh, excited to scale it to $150,000 a month consistently profit. So hope you guys all enjoyed. Stay tuned for the Villa tour coming up next week. And as I said, go ahead and drop Pete tons of love in the comments for always killing it with these vlogs. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.